Bray Weisert here from thefeatherbrain.com. Today I'm going to answer five questions about using sand in the coop or run. I've been getting a lot of sand questions, so I thought I'd just put them all together in a quick video for you. Just so you know what you are in store for, you're going to learn here about what kind of sand to use, um, if it's dusty, how to clean the sand and what to do, how to protect yourself. You're gonna learn about fleas and mites. If you get fleas and mites and you have sand, what to do. And I think that covers most of it. Let's get started. So the first question comes from Mariha or Mariah. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. She asks, what do I do about sand flea mites in the sand? I normally do nothing, but every time I go out to sift, my poor ankles get a beating. What can I use in the sand to prevent them? And is this safe around the girls? Oh, I'm sorry, and is safe around the girls. All right, so if you're getting so many fleas or mites in your sand that they're biting you when you're out there cleaning, that's gotta be really, really horrible on your chickens. And um, Maria or Mariah, I don't know where you're from. If maybe you have some different circumstances than what I'm used to, I've not heard of that ever being an issue. So I know, Speck, it would be terrible. So um, I kind of like to know a little bit more about your setup and maybe where you're coming from if this is maybe something that we're getting from a different climate or something like that. Because what I'm wondering is, is this just a temporary problem that you could solve with something? Or are you in a place where maybe there's just mites and fleas in the sand and that this just isn't going to go away? Because if that's the case, then I might try a different type of bedding. Fleas and mites love organic bedding, but the good thing about organic bedding is that if you get an infestation, then you can burn the bedding and then you can clean with, um, I'll go over what I use in a minute, but you can clean with this cleaner to kill them and then you can clean your chickens and you can get rid of those fleas and mites. And then you, if it's a recurring problem, you might just have to more frequently burn your bedding and kind of do some treatments. My concern with the sand is that if there's so many in there that they're biting you, I mean, that's a really heavy load. And I don't know that sand is a good idea in your situation. I have had my chickens get fleas and mites with sand bedding. It's it's happened in um, just one of my flocks. And I think it's because I had a rooster I rescued who, when I got him, he was just being eaten alive by all these mites and fleas. He had more than one thing on him. Um, and I treated him, but I always kind of wonder if maybe I didn't get them all because then when I put him in with some hens, they ended up getting fleas and mites and none of my other, um, none of my other, hi, sweetie flocks did. And so I did have that problem and I did have sand bedding. And what I did was I treated the chickens with, it's called Elector PS, I think. I'll flash up a photo. And actually I just um, followed what the chicken chick does because I needed to do something right away and I didn't have time to do a bunch of research and she tends to be pretty reliable. So I just ordered some of that. It came right away and then I sprayed that on my chickens. I sprayed it all over their roosting bars and their coop and then I sprayed some just on the top of their sand bedding and it worked. The mites went away and we never had a problem again. So you can actually deal with mites even if you have sand bedding because I actually was really worried when they got mites because I know you're supposed to burn the bedding when your chickens get mites or lice and I thought oh my gosh we can't just get rid of the sand the whole time because it's hard to get more sand. It comes from a gravel company and right now it's the middle of winter so it'd be covered in snow and I can't put wet sand in there and it's expensive and it's a hassle and yeah, so I was worried, but it ended up not being a problem. I was able to treat them and the mites and lice never, never got a foothold again. So um, you could try that and see how it goes. But if it's a recurring problem, I might just scrap the sand altogether, put in organic bedding and change it frequently and treat your coop frequently. Um, hopefully it's not a recurring problem. It, Like I said, I would really like to know more about your environment and where you're from to maybe give you a better answer. Try the Elector PS and then maybe consider a different bedding if you're still having a problem. You don't want to have to spray that every single day on your sand or on your chickens. It's 
it's not toxic to them, but I can't imagine that it's good for them. It's not meant to be used every single day. So give it a try and then maybe try a different bedding if it doesn't work. The second question comes from Susan and she asks, do you have a lot of dust with your sand? When I scoop it, there's a lot of dust. I use a flea rake. So yes, I have a lot of dust. The dust is terrible. Um, when I'm cleaning it, it's not terrible otherwise. It's one of the reasons I like sand is that the, the dust isn't usually a problem, which when I was using pine shavings way back in the day when I didn't know much about them, the dust was a terrible problem. But when you're cleaning the sand, the dust is horrible and you have to protect yourself from that because fine grain sand that you inhale is really, really bad for you. It can get lodged in your lungs. Worst case scenario, um, and this can happen, this would have, if you were a sandblaster and you didn't have protective material, this is a huge risk, which we're not sandblasters, but we should still protect ourselves from the large amounts of fine grain sand. And that worst case scenario is silicosis or silicate pneumoconiosis, very similar. Silicosis comes from inhaling fine grain quartz, uh, which is typically common in most sands. And then silicate pneumoconiosis, no, sorry, <laughs> silicate pneumoconiosis can come from some of the other silicate minerals that you might find in sands, but they're both just when these fine grain particles lodge in the lungs and cause scarring and damage, and it can be pretty horrible, pretty horrible disease. So when you clean with sand, always use a mask. And I just use a regular um, N95 mask. My husband who cleans our larger coops, he just off of Amazon got a full face respirator that he uses. Um, he puts on coveralls and in the smaller coops, I can just scoop it out with the pooper scooper and it's really pretty easy. In our larger coops, he actually made just out of wood and some... Um, fencing, just a little bit of metal fencing. He made his own kind of sieve and then he shovels the sand through that sieve and that goes a lot faster than trying to go around with a pooper scooper and a giant coop and clean things out. And so he just, with that shovel, kicks up a lot more dusk. And um, he used to use the N95s, but now he just decided to go with the respirator. So I'll link to what we use below. Um, but you definitely want to protect your lungs. And I actually would recommend that for any type of bedding you're using with organic bedding too. You, it, It's not going to cause silicate pneumoconiosis or silicosis, but it can still be hard on your lungs. So just... Um, protect, just protect your face, protect your lungs when you clean. We also use, well, my husband uses goggles and I put on glasses or sunglasses when I clean, just so you're not getting any of that stuff in your eyes. And yeah, that's what we do. Susan says she uses a flea rake, which to be honest, I didn't even know what a flea, flea rake was. So I looked it up on Amazon and that does look like a good idea. So I'll link to that below too, if you guys want to look more into that. Yulia asked me if I could share a link to the pooper scooper I used. So yes, I will. And thank you for asking. Um, any just regular cat pooper scooper you can use. So if you happen to have one around, you can use it or just pick one up at your grocery store or Walmart or whatever is easy. I will link to one from Amazon that I've used below and I'll link to one from Chewy. And so if you want to support the channel and you're buying one of these things anyway, if you use one of my links below, then they are affiliate links. So I'll get a small commission, possibly, if you use the link. And that's one of the best ways that you can support this channel and the free content that I put out. With the Chewy link, I get a really, really good commission if you're a first time customer. They are incredible for that. And then if you've ever ordered from Chewy before and you're not a first time customer, then I don't get anything. From Amazon, the commission is horrible. It's one to 3%, depending on what you buy. Um, but they at least do pay on everything. But just so you know, if you wanna help out, that's how you can do it. And if you would order through Chewy and you're new, I would really, really appreciate that. And then question number four comes from Elodie. And she emailed me because she found two different types of sand. One she felt was maybe a little too fine grained for her coop or run. 
and the other she felt might be a little too coarse grained for her coop and run. So she sent photos of them to me to see which one that I thought that she should use. And typically I tell people to do the pooper scooper test, which is just to take your pooper scooper with you, run it through the sand, and you want the sand to be basically as coarse grained as possible and still go through that pooper scooper because if it can't go through the pooper scooper, you're not gonna be able to scoop the poop out of that sand and it's, it's just, you lose a lot of the benefits of sand. You'll have to replace it rather than be able to clean it. Eleni, let me first show you the fine grain sand. So this is what she showed and she said it looks a bit finer grained than mine and it does maybe look a bit finer grained but not too bad. And then the other one is significantly coarser grained and so here's what that looks like. And she said they're both coarse washed river sand so that's good. Uh, we're going to talk about beach sand here in a minute because that's the next question but washed river sand is a good way to go. And Elodie said that even though the coarser one did pass the pooper scooper test, the reason she's kind of worried about it was because some other poultry keepers told her that it looked too coarse and that it might actually cause bumblefoot. And that is a thing that happens. Um, I've had it happen, um, nothing serious, but I have outside of one of my sheds, I have gravel laid down and we actually have gravel laid down under the shed. And the shed is just high enough for the chickens to get under it. And they used to be free ranging until recently. And so um, they could go wherever they wanted and they go under the shed on that gravel. And it became a problem this last summer because I live in Southwest Idaho, which usually doesn't get very hot. And if it does get hot, it's only for a few days, but we had this horrible heat wave and so we had temperatures above 100 degrees for just weeks and in the high 90s for just weeks. And we never have that. And the chickens really suffered from that. And so they liked to go under this shed where I think it was just a lot cooler. And they had made some little kind of dust bath burrows in there. And I think just the shade and the ground was cooler under there. The problem was there was gravel and the gravel, it was much, much larger than the coarse sand that um, Elodie showed me. So they were, you know, pieces like that big, that big, and they're rocks and they're just jagged, jagged rocks. And when your chickens stand on jagged rocks for a prolonged period of time, which was what was happening under the shed, they'd go under there all day and just stand on those hard rocks. That can um, cause some damage to their little foot pads. And so when we, we were doing chicken checks on them every couple of weeks and we were finding that they were all getting these little scabs on their pads. And so for most of them, the scabs were small and there are a couple where the, the scabs were really, really big. And so we did some home treatment on those. None of them were infected. If you've seen these bumblefoot infections, they look really, really horrible and they can kill your chickens. And um, if you don't get surgery done on them, but um, ours were nothing like that. They were just scabs. And one of them, the scab came off and the skin had healed underneath and all was well. The other one, we treated her foot. Uh, my husband's a nurse, so he just had some ideas on what to do. We treated it for, gosh, a couple of months and there was just no change. So I finally took her into the vet who told us just to scrub a bit harder and um, keep her on soft bedding. So we had to keep her in a cage on really soft bedding um, in the coop. So she was still with the other chickens, but um, yeah, we just kept her in that super soft bedding and scrubbed her foot with <sighs> some kind of antiseptic solution. I wish I could remember what it was called, but we scrubbed it twice a day and then eventually, and she said, you know, don't scrub it so it rips off because then you're just going to have another scab grow over. But eventually it started coming off and then it came off all the way and her foot was fine. But um that's what these people are referring to that can happen if they're standing on these coarse jagged rocks and in my case we didn't have infection but it could potentially happen and so looking at that coarse sand could that happen on that sand which like i said is much much finer grained and less jagged looking than the big rocks that we had maybe i don't know for sure i doubt that it would but um that kind of sand that you're showing me right there, I love the looks of that. I've never been able to find anything like that here. That is what I would like to use for my chickens. Um, the fact that I haven't found anything like that here and I haven't seen anybody else online who's found sand quite that coarse. And so um, I just, I don't wanna tell you that they wouldn't get bumblefoot or scabs because I just don't know that for sure. And you will be taking somewhat of a chance 
But if it were up to me, I would definitely try out that other sand. The other one that you showed me that was finer grained, that's usually close to as good as most of us can do. Um, so many areas just don't have the right kind of sand. And so there were some coarser grains in there. I would still, that's not a bad sand. It's just, um, as I talked about earlier in this video, silicosis, it's, that has a lot more finer grains than that type of sand. And um, all sand with fine grains is a risk for that. The sand I use has fine grains in it too, and that silicosis is a risk. Uh, I have a whole article on this, and I explain that, and this is, if you've read many articles on my blog, you know that this could be my motto, and it's that there is no good chicken coop bedding. Like, they're all bad. But I think that after looking all the re at all the research, it's the medium to coarse grain sand that seems the less scary out of the least scary out of all the different bedding. So um, that sand you showed didn't look much finer than mine, and it's probably fine too. And if my choice was between that sand and organic bedding, I definitely pick that sand. So that's my take on that LED. I would love to try out the coarser one. I can't tell you for sure that you wouldn't have any problems with it, but I doubt you would. And the finer one is fine too. So either one you pick, don't worry, just try it out, see how it goes. All right, my fifth question comes from Mel and Mel asks, can I use sand from my local beach? I only have a tiny coop and the sand is quite coarse as in your picture. Any problem with it being salty if I rinse it first? All right, so normally for most types of beach sand, I would just say no right off the bat because they tend to be really fine grained. And you, as we've gone over, you don't want fine grained sand. And beach sands tend to be mostly quartz. And so you have this fine grained quartz, you're, you, you've just got this increased risk of the silicosis. However, Mel says that the sand that he or she, I guess Mel could really go with either, um, the sand that they are talking about is coarser grained and not, I guess, what I typically think of when I see on the beach. There are rocky beaches, but I automatically go to the fine grained sand beaches in my mind when I hear beach. But then the additional question becomes, it, could it be too salty? And that's a really good question. And I don't have the answer for you, although I will give you some of my thoughts and hopefully those will help. So first of all, before getting into the salinity aspect, um, there is another aspect of beach sand that can worry me, and that's just that, I don't know, sometimes with these sands coming in from the ocean, the ocean just has a lot of bacteria and stuff in it, and I just don't know if you might end up having some more pathogens in your sand as opposed to some of these other kinds of sand. So um, river sand, riverbank sand is one, and riverbank sand, typically you've got fresh water going over it all the time. If it was in, um, if it was in stagnant water, that would maybe be a concern, but typically it's just being washed all the time. And then, um, if it's also labeled as washed, that means it's gone through an extensive construction washing process. So, um, I can link to a video that shows you what washed sand means. It doesn't just mean that someone sprayed it down with a hose. I mean, it goes through sieves and it's, it's like a, it's a major, major thing with big equipment. And then another source of sand comes from quarries. And so this is sand that's just basically come from rocks being crushed. So this sand has gone through um, really high temperatures and pressures to become rock. And so it doesn't have those concerns of you know, having water bacteria that would have all died off however old that rock forming was <laughs> could be millions of years, who knows. Um, but yeah, with your beach sand, you don't have that. So um, that would be my first concern. And again, I can't tell you that your chickens would get sick from anything. I just don't know, but I would be concerned about it personally. As with the salinity, I don't know much about salinity and sand. So I don't know what the concentrations of that would be. I did look up, let me grab it. So if you don't have um, Gil Damro's Chicken Health Handbook, it's incredible. And I suggest that every chicken keeper get it. You will reference it. I reference it all the time. Whenever I have a sick chicken, I reference it. But she does have a section on salt and 
it is kind of alarming. So I just want to go over that quickly to kind of help put this question into better perspective. So she says that chickens have a relatively low requirement for salt and an excessive dose can be toxic. And she says that they can be poisoned just by pecking rock salt that's used on sideways, sidewalks or driveways. And, um, or after eating a salt supplement intended for other livestock. And this was news to me and quite scary, but she says chickens that do not have access to water at all times may be poisoned by even a normal amount of salt in the ration. So think about that. Like if you just have regular chicken feed out and say you have two waterers out and I don't know, maybe one of them, we'll just say both of them get poop in them or something. And so the chickens stop drinking them. Well, they can die from salt poisoning from just eating the rations and not drinking. And that's just crazy, right? I and mean, that's kind of scary because I have had a couple of times where their water has been undrinkable. And it's always just been something kind of random that's happened. It's it's never been a long-term problem, but that's quite scary to know that just that could cause salt poisoning because they get too much salt from their feed that way. And let's see. So she says, poisoning can happen when a flock has no source of drinking water other than highly saline water. Some protein supplements, including fish meal, sunflower meal, and whey, may contain excesses, excessive amounts of salt, resulting in toxicity when combined with a normal salt-fortified ration. And so that normal ration would be our layer feed or all flock or whatever you're using. So it seems that, and I didn't really realize this before, and it's not really a problem because I don't really feed my chickens treats other than the video I released recently, which is just their layer crumble with water in it. And I'll link to that because they love that. Um, but it seems like they have a pretty low tolerance for excess salt, excess outside of their feed. And then she says, and this of course makes sense, that um, chicks are more susceptible to salt poisoning than our mature chickens. And that makes sense because they are tiny and um, I'm sure there's just would take a lot less salt to hurt them. And then for those of you who are curious, because really this salt poisoning could happen, um, the signs of it include increased thirst, increased urine output, output, so basically looser droppings, um, weak muscles, convulsions, and death. And here's the important part, because now we got some hard numbers. A lethal dose of salt is 0 0.06 ounce per pound, which is four grams per kilogram of body weight. So for a five pound chicken, that amounts to about one third ounce or one and a half teaspoons. All right, so that's the lethal dose for a five pound chicken, one and a half teaspoons of salt. Could they get that from your beach sand? I doubt it. I doubt that they would eat that much sand. They do eat sand um, for grit, especially if it's coarse grained, as you said that yours is, but how much salt is actually gonna be on a grain of sand? I, I don't, the answer is I don't know. So I can't tell you for sure that they wouldn't be getting a lethal dose, but um, I doubt it, but I still, I personally wouldn't take the chance and I just wouldn't take the chance because of the pathogen aspect of it too. Um, that's my personal opinion. And I wish that I could give you a really solid, no, don't use this. This will kill your chickens or yes, it's not a problem, but I just don't know for sure. But Mel, if you do decide to use the sand, please let me know how it goes. And either way, if it turns out great or terrible, um, these learning experiences help all of us. So please, please update me. All right, so those are the five questions. If you guys want more information on sand, I have a YouTube video on using sand in the run that I will link to. And then I have a very detailed, um, very well-cited article on sand and silicosis. And then I have a very long and very useful article on how to use sand in the coop, the pros and cons, and just I try to answer every question that you have in that article. So check that out if you really want to know more about using sand.
And if you have some other questions about sand that I haven't answered here, please leave me a comment below and I will try to get to it at some point. It does take me a while to get to your guys' questions. Apologize for that busy schedule, but I will do my best to address it at some point. So, all right. I hope this has been helpful. Until next time, happy chickening.